Hello there, fellow YouTubers. I want to talk about something video editing related. Now, I've been editing for 13 years, self-taught, uh, amateur style for the most part, pretty much all the part. But I want to show you something that I've seen kind of persistently through a bunch of different YouTubers' videos, especially those um, who are new to the scene, people who are not quite experienced, and it's a little thing called Phantom Frames. Now, if you don't know what phantom frames are, that's okay because it's not a common term, but it's kind of everywhere. And uh, I want to help you with that. Now, I'm not the fanciest editor. I watch something like The Right Opinion, and those edits are insane. Those editors are working way too hard on putting those segments together, but that's the style, so that's how it is. But it's great work. I want to show you what it is. A phantom frame is a, just a sliver of footage in your film that causes a visual distraction. It's like a little sliver. If you remember Fight Club, those scenes where they cut in little frames of pornography into kids' movies, basically the same effect, but it's almost entirely unintentional and almost entirely unseen, which is why it doesn't get caught. And I know that I am definitely guilty of it uh, from time to time. So what do they look like? What are these phantom frames? Well, let me bring up a video by uh, Bright Sun Films. He does really cool documentaries about canceled and abandoned things and stuff. I would highly advise you check out his channel. It's down in the description below, of course. But let's let me play this and see if you can point it out. As the show continued to air, ratings did slump as low as 6 million people, and the season wrapped up by December 19th with a pretty spectacular season finale. Did you see it? No? Let's let's bring it back and uh, try watching it in a little bit slower. And the season wrapped up by December 19th. There it is. Now, not to pick on Bright Sun Films, he does really cool stuff, and this is admittedly a three-year-old video. Uh, but he does it in another spot, see if you can see it here. The idea of another company swooping in and taking over production, especially at that budget, were kind of slim. However, Now here's another YouTuber entirely. This is The Critical Drinker and his review of the new Charlie's Angels remake. See if you can find it here. I do this so you don't have to. Allow me to regale you with the story of Charlie's Angels. So the movie opens with... So as you can see, it's kind of a, it's a pretty common thing. It's super easy to fix. The hardest part is finding it and seeing it and catching it uh, because it is like so short, usually it's a frame or two frames or five frames. Uh, it's rarely anything long. And it usually happens with YouTube videos that are comprised of clips and trailers, stuff that's already pre-edited as opposed to something you're pulling out raw from your camera like this. So let's, Let's dive in. I've got an example here. So here we have a very simple example. It's just four clips on a timeline. It's my it's my voiceover underneath and then the four clips on top. Let's go ahead and give that a play. This is an advertisement for the Nth Review, a YouTube channel about gaming. It's got a whole bunch of really cool short form and long form gaming content and commentary. You should watch all of the videos and subscribe and like everything on it and share it with all your friends. This is the end of the video and the review is really cool. Now for those eagle eyed watchers, no you don't have to be eagle eyed, it's pretty obvious. You probably, you should have seen three phantom frames uh, in there. And uh, they're usually not lined up like this when it happens to your videos. They're usually spread out and hidden. But in this case, I put them together just for making a point. So what do we do to fix these? It's super simple. Now I'm working in Premiere here. Uh, it's a very common uh, video editor, uh, but it should apply to pretty much anything that you're using, except for like Movie Maker, and then I'm sorry. Uh, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to, go to the first clip here. As you can see here, the phantom frames are at the end of this clip before it cuts to the next clip. And these are just, uh, these are clips from stuff I've already done. So it's kind of highlight the difference here, um, why this happens. So all we have to do is get rid of these phantom frames. So how do we do that without disturbing the fact that we've got everything timed out just right video to uh, audio on the timeline. So what we're going to do, and this is my favorite tool, 
probably my favorite tool. I'm gonna hit the Y key and I'm gonna get the slip tool. And what the slip tool does is it allows me to basically slide the footage around like a conveyor belt within the same timings on the timeline so that I can get access to better footage, essentially better fitting footage. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to click on this first clip, make sure my slip tool is selected with Y and I'm gonna move it just a little bit. And if you look in the preview window, you see that those offending frames are gone. They match what's actually beginning and end the same. So if we hit V to just have our select tool, let's play it back a little bit. And look, those phantom frames are done. Let's move to the second clip and these frames are also at the end, these phantom frames. So let's go ahead and pull out our slip tool and move those along just a little bit and hit V, scrub around, look, oh, those are gone. This third clip though, this is where things get tricky and this is where you might have just a little bit more trouble. So this one also has the phantom frames at the end of the clip, just these couple frames here. And let's pull out our slip tool and drag those out. Now you're noticing something uh, is different here. Uh, we want to show off this segment, but it's shorter than the time that we have allotted for it on the timeline. So if we slip it to the end, there's a phantom frame at the beginning, but if we slip it to the beginning, there's phantom frames at the end. So what do we do? Now we can trim, say, the uh, audio down, we can trim the narration down, uh, but you've already worked hard on that, you wrote that out, you recorded it, you've already cut it together and put it in here. You don't really wanna mess with that. And there are a bunch of solutions here, uh, actually. But the one that works best for me, and this is something that no one will ever notice is uh we're just gonna stretch it out so let's slip it back to the beginning here and so that the phantom frames are at the end or the beginning it doesn't matter let's pull out v for our selection tool let's literally cut those frames out by making the clip shorter and then we're going to hit r for our rate stretch tool and we're going to grab the end and fill the space. And your clip here is going to get, you know, like 2% longer or really 2% slower or whatever that math adds up being. But if we scrub around, hit V, scrub around, you'll see that there are no longer any phantom frames. Knocked them all out. No one's going to notice that you cut out two, three, four, five frames from your clip here. Uh, they're just going to see the smooth result and not have any phantom frames. So super easy, super easy to understand. All you have to do is be on the eye out for it when you're cutting in your footage. And this is going to make things look a lot better, less visually jarring and make your videos better. So I have a little bit of wisdom here. I wanted to share it with you. So if that was educational, if that helped you out, if you liked this video, smash that like button, smash that subscribe button, hit the bell so you get notifications. <sighs> Don't forget the discussion <laughs> continues on Discord and Twitter and Facebook and Reddit. It's all there. It's all there. It's all there. And hey, I'll see you next time.